So today we're going to talk about claims, filing claims and how to handle them effectively with your team. This is a super, super important part of our business is if you want to blow your competition away, if you want to blow Colonial and Affleck away, the, the number one thing is the customer service that you provide to your customers after you've already got them protected. That's going to be the difference between a, uh, an agent and an excellent agent that keeps business on the books long term. So that way, one day when you retire, your renewals look extra, you know, awesome because you were that awesome agent that protected families, but also helped them when they're in a time of need. Okay, so number one action item is I would invest in yourself and listen to the Elevators podcast by Amber Winfrey, where she talks about the very, very nitty gritty details on how to file claims. Okay, Amber Winfrey uh, wrote over a million dollars worth of business in her first three years. And uh, she's been here for about four years. She will be an agency owner at some point. She's one of the highest regional directors in the company. But her part on handling claims is what has helped her get to a level of her business that, you know, all she has to do is go reservice her clients. They love working with her. It's because she's really good at handling claims. And she talks about how to file claims in the most professional way. Um, it's the Elevators podcast, and it, it's literally called, you know, handling claims, you know, handling benefits and claims with your clients. So make sure that you invest, you know, 30 minutes in yourself and listen to that. It is phenomenal. Okay. So real quick, guys, one of the things about handling claims with their clients is on a yearly basis on the cancer and heart policies, they can get paid 240 bucks a year on the elite level to go get paid their yearly physicals, you know, colonoscopies, you know, EKGs, echocardiograms. Those are really easy to file right now. So just essentially know this. There's really two ways that we can file claims. Two ways. They can either fax it in the old school way or they can now go to our website and do it that way and actually upload it from their phone or from their computer and just submit it online. Easy peasy. It's super duper simple. I actually, whenever I, I reservice my customers and my businesses, I actually show them, I go to the website. I'm going to show you guys kind of what that looks like whenever I sit down with somebody and how I show them how to file a claim. So let me um, share my screen real quick. There we go. So here's the website right here. Pull this down a little bit. Oop. There we go. Can you guys see, can you guys see the website? Just want to make sure. Okay, perfect. Sorry, the internet is very slow. Whenever I share my screen, I'm trying to load it, loading a new page. But so you just essentially go here, click on this little. This is the homepage, the Global Life Family Heritage website. You go down here where it says File a Claim. Just click on that. I don't see it. I have to say, it was very clear to me from the evidence that this defendant put himself out there to protect him in housing. It's also true that before the housing of the second unit, before that paperwork was completed, Ashley chose to make sure you're all muted. Yep. Hey, that was a, it didn't say a name. It just said iPhone. So I have no idea who that was, but I just got it muted. So <laughs> that's funny. Sounds uh, like they're really paying attention to the zoom. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Sorry guys. I'm trying to make this so it fits my screen. There we go. All right. Perfect. So here it is. So here's the claim homepage right here. So you click on this. Um, so whenever they're doing their yearly physicals, this is all they need to do. File a cancer, heart screening, or wellness claim. So if they have the cancer, the heart policy, you walk them through how to do this face-to-face. -face. Or you can get them on Zoom, or you can even do it over the phone if they're really, really far away from you. Some of my clients from five and six years ago live in Whiteville, North Carolina, Goldsboro, and that's four hours away from Charlotte. So I got to show them how to do it over the phone or over Zoom. But it's worth doing this. And investing back into your business because uh, it will pay you tenfold for sure. So you click on file a cancer and heart screening. And it even tells you what you need to have. And the good news is now we have the CRM nowadays with Salesforce. So if you want to get somebody's policy number, if they're your client, all you have to do is type in their name on the search bar on your Salesforce. And boom, it gives you their policy number for all the policies that they have. It takes like 30 seconds. So you scroll down to the bottom and hit submit an e-claim. So you just hit submit an e-claim. And really two ways you can do it. You can either put in their last name and date of birth. So I'll just, for example, put in my last name, 10, 24, 1989, then boom.
and you just walk them through, find their claim. So really all they need guys is just documentation for their physical. So if they have like a prostate test or their wife had a mammogram or pap smear, all they need is documentation. So you would just, it says right here, claim type. And right here, if it's an accident claim, you click on accident. If it's a cancer first diagnosis, you know, if it's a wellness screen, like a pap smear or a heart, like an EKG or stress test, you're going to click on this right here, cancer and heart or wellness. Click on that. And then you just hit next. And then just keep going through. Now is the point where you're going to upload documents. You can either do this from your cell phone or your computer, guys. And, and that's pretty much it. Once you upload documents, you just hit submit and you're good to go. It literally is that simple. So that's how you file a wellness claim. Okay. That's how you file a wellness claim. And that's actually the same part of how you file other claims as well. Are there any questions on that so far? Yeah. What exactly do you mean documents? Did they have to be like bills or? Great question, Trisha. That's actually a really good question. Very good question. So essentially what we need is documentation that they actually had it done. Um, they're, they're pretty lenient when it comes to wellness benefits, like, uh, just like, you know, proof that say Trisha Hastings had her pap smear done today, uh, December 13th or December 14th of 2022, just like it can be a sheet of paper. It could be an itemized bill, but any documentation from the doctor that she actually had that screening done. Okay. It's pretty Thanks. simple. Um, and if, uh, you want to go next level, just to make sure to clear any confusion in the home office, I actually get them to write their policy number on that documentation as well. So they can write their policy number on there and you can find their policy number for them just by going to the Salesforce, looking at their name and it'll, it'll tell you what their policy number is and you can just text it over to them and then they can write that on top and they can even take a picture of that documentation on their cell phone and then go to the website on their cell phone and do exactly what we just did and they can upload that document from their phone, like that picture from their phone and just submit it. And sometimes I'll even have clients text me a picture of the form of the documentation and I'll submit it for them or I'll fax it over. And guys, you can also do that. Um, what I just did, you can also fax it to our home office. And uh, in about five seconds, I will tell you what the fax number is. I just want to make sure I say the, the, the right. There's about 10 different fax numbers that I have on my phone. Yes. Yeah, so for, for wellness faxes, it is 440-922-5152. So if they want to fax over, you know, any kind of documents to claim. Now, they, they submit that? Who could you repeat the question? They put their information in and they submit that. It doesn't reference their policy numbers. Great. I think you need to take yourself off Bluetooth, man. Uh, it's kind of going in and out. I can't hear what you're saying. I can hear the first few words. Um, when they when they when they file the claim and they put their information in, does it not reference their policy number? Technically, on on the website, you don't have to have it. You just says last name and date of birth. That's what it asks. You can put the policy number on there, and I would do that anyways on the documentation just to make sure it clears up any confusion. But it you don't have to have their policy number. With the new way that we file claims with the wellness, that's just with the wellness, Greg. Now, if you're filing like a cancer claim or accident, like an actual, like a claim claim, then yes, you have to fill out the claim form that asks for the policy number. But for the wellness, uh, it doesn't ask for the policy number. Um, I still put it on there just to make sure it clears up any confusion in the home office. But it, it you can you can either put their policy number and their date of birth, or you can just put their last name and date of birth as well. So you could do either way that you, you prefer. Okay. So it's nice and quick and easy. I would get that, that link saved on your phone for the claims. I have it saved on my phone. So I have literally three to five people a week text me or calling me on how to file claims. I will send them that link in a text message and then give them a call immediately afterwards, explain the step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step process of how to file their accident claim or their cancer claim. Okay. So one of the big things about the accident claim and the elevators podcast kind of talks about this is that they do need to see like a doctor um, or, you know, see somebody within 14 days of the accident happening. So make sure that if they are ever filing an accident claim, they have to see somebody within 14 days of the injury happening. Okay. That, that is like the fine, really the only, you know, massive fine print 
that we just that the home office really wants to make sure. So if they got injured and they didn't go to a doctor for three months, there's really no purpose to file that claim. Right. So make sure like, hey, did you go see a doctor within 14 days of the injury occurring? Perfect. OK, then game on. We're going to you know, we're going to play ball. We're going to get the ball rolling. Right. So now got all the nitty gritties of file claims. It's pretty simple, but it's, you know, each one's a little bit differently. So I know for the cancer. So when somebody's diagnosed with cancer, we're going to get a few things. And the website actually explains exactly. Let me actually pull this website back up. Let me go back to the. Uh, to the homepage and share my screen once I get there. So cancer claims, we're going to need to get a few things. Uh, we're going to need to get a pathology report, which is just essentially a form that's going to show their cancer diagnosis. Let me uh, pull this up. There we go. So let's go back to, it literally will walk you through as the agent what you need to file this claim. So go back to the claims page. Click X out of that. So file a cancer claim. Boom. It literally shows you exactly what you need. You're going to need the policy number, name and email address, date of birth, whole nine yards. Um, this is what you need to have. Now, do you have to have every single one of these items? Not all the time but just make sure that you let them know that these are the things that they need to have. And that's why I like sending this page. I like texting this page, the link to their cell phone. That way they can, you know, read it themselves. So the customer will know exactly what they need to have and you can walk them through it. So, Hey, you're going to need to fill out a first occurrence benefit form. So you would just click on this link and it's a form that they fill out. And then their, their, their physician is also going to fill out a few, uh, a part of that form as well. Walk them through that. The pathology report with the positive cancer diagnosis. And it even gives an example of what that is. If they just ask for a pathology report, they have to give it to them. So they just have to ask the doctor, hey, can I get a copy of my pathology report? And they will give it to you, okay? Copy of the medical records, you know, for a clinical diagnosis of cancer um, or the MRIs, the CT scans, ultrasounds, the whole nine yards. Medical records for the visits that you had while you're going through cancer, very important. Um, if you had biopsy done or surgery bill, collect those as well, because that's going to be a little bit different bill uh, than everything else. So make sure that you get those bills as well uh, for any biopsies or surgeries. Itemized bills, the whole nine yards. Um, and then uh, itemized chemo and radiation. You know, if you're doing treatment five times a week or whatever it may be, get itemized bills for your treatments. And also you can either fax that in or upload, upload it on the website. And guys, some doctors will literally email you all your itemized bills, your medical records, and they can just take that email and even upload it uh, to the website as well. Okay, they can just save it as a document. They can just upload it from their computer. It's pretty simple nowadays. Surgery bills, the whole nine yards. So this will have everything that they need to have. Sometimes they don't need to submit all this stuff. Like sometimes you have cancer, you don't even have surgery. So that you're not going to have a surgery bill, right? So obviously it's a situational thing, but this has got everything that you would ever need to have when submitting a cancer claim. And then down here at the bottom is travel log. So let's say that they're going from Charlotte to Duke Hospital. That's definitely over 80 miles one way. Well, you would definitely get a travel log. You know, the, the address for the hospital that you went to, they obviously have your address from your house. And they would just have a log of all the dates that you're there. That They can also look at your itemized bills to make sure um, if you have hotel receipts, if you stayed, if you had your wife and kids staying at a hotel close by at Duke Hospital, um, you're going to fax over or upload your receipts of the hotels that you stayed at. And they can reimburse up to $200 a night for those. If you bought a plane ticket to MD Anderson, uh, Houston, Texas, or to, you know, uh, Rochester, Minnesota, where the Mayo Clinic is headquartered at, you know, you can show them your plane tickets, um, you know, the, the invoice for that, and then they will reimburse up to $2,500 uh, for each person, uh, for you and one other person in your family to go there with you. So it literally has everything, everything that they need. And then you would just scroll down to the bottom and hit submit an e-claim and just go through the process. OK, and they don't have to upload everything all at one time. They can do it in increment increments. Um, so some people, they can wait until they're completely done with cancer and then they can submit everything all at one time. Or if they want to get paid throughout the process, they can just, you know, submit the initial diagnosis, pathology report, itemized bills for their for their visits and get paid that six thousand dollars cash up front in their personal checking account. And then as they're getting treatment, they can send off the other itemized bills 
you know, as they're going through treatment, as they're going through surgeries, the travel log, as they're going through cancer, and that way they can get continuously get paid throughout the process. So everybody's different on that. Sometimes people just want to get paid all at one time, a big massive check at the very end. Some people want to get paid throughout the process because they need to pay their, their house bill like pronto, right? So same thing with accidents, guys, is a very similar process with heart claims, accidents. It literally, you can just click on this. So if you're filing an accident claim, I remember my first year, I probably helped about five, at least five or six people file an accident claim. Even in my first year, I only had one person have cancer my first year in the business. Uh, but I followed a ton of accident claims in my first year. But it literally walks you through the same thing, what you would need to have to file an accident claim. Now, when you're filing an accident claim, you may not need to get every single one of these documents. You know, uh, if it's like a, if it's a car accident, there's a couple extra things you get, like a police report, you know, like an ambulance bill. Um, that you may not need to get that if you just broke your arm and your mom drove you to the urgent care. You, you're not going to need to get an ambulance bill or a police report because you, you weren't injured in a car accident, ambulance didn't pick you up. So obviously there's different situational factors, but make sure that you educate yourself. Spend 30 minutes tonight reading all this stuff over. Right now, I'm doing this right now. I had a client call me uh, yesterday on Tuesday. Um, unfortunately, the mom passed away a year ago and the daughter turns 18 on December 21st. So on December 21st, we're going to pay the daughter out um, the um, $20,000 accidental death. And if the daughter goes to college, she'll get an additional $10,000 for education because she has her, her mom had the preferred for um, single parent accident policy. Unfortunately, the mom passed away a year ago in a freak accident. So when the daughter turns 18, uh, we're going to give her uh, that $20,000 accidental death on the, on the preferred for accident plan. So we're going to get her certified death certificate. Um, in, in, in all these articles right here. So. Um, Kyle, I have a question. Right. So if a child is the beneficiary, they will not get it until they're 18. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yep. We will not pay. Now we, we can pay the estate. Um, and you, you may want to call customer services. Don't want to hundred percent clarify this. Uh, but, um, if the, the estate, so let's say that there's a guardian for the kid. Um, yeah. we can pay them, but they have to submit a lot of documentation of their guardianship, you know, before, before the child turns 18. Okay. okay. So, um, but in this situation, the daughter was 17 last year. So we just decided that we're going to wait until she's 18 and the daughter wanted to wait until she's 18, um, before she gets the money. So, you know, cause her mom just passed away a year ago. So it depends on, on how old, you know, if, if the kids are four years old. Um, they're definitely going to get a guardianship that may want to get that money right now to help raise the kids. So in situations like that, it can vary depending on who the guardian is. But yes, but for the most time, if it's going to go to the kids and the kids only, then they do have, then the state will wait until they're 18 years old before we uh, disperse that accidental death return of premium back to the kids. Okay, thank you. But that can be, you know, variation depending on the on the situation, how old the kids are, you know, whole nine yards. But family heritage is going to make sure that they do the right thing for the kids and for the family, 100%. And guys, one thing about this, I'm not going to go super, super in depth about how to file every single, you know, claim that there possibly is. But the most important thing about today's Zoom call is just showing them that you care. People will not care how much you know until you show them how much you care. If you want to be an expert agent, and have your clients give you referrals year after year after year, you can have the ability to go reservice all your businesses. Guys, I have companies that will call me back once a year because they want me to come back and reservice them because I have manually helped file claims. I have drove to people's houses and caught paperwork. I went to Bessemer City to the same person's house three times last year, about a 45 minute drive from my house to go pick up a, a massive lot of paperwork for this guy who was in the ICU, and I literally mailed it in myself at UPS, paid about 30 bucks each time to mail that paperwork in. Now we can do everything online. So if this would have been, you know, this year, I could have just, you know, uploaded those documents online. Uh, we just started, we, we just got that in March of this year, the online portal, uh, which makes it a lot easier. Used to, we, we either had to mail things in or fax things in. Now we can just go online and upload documents, which saves a lot of time and a lot of money from having to go to the post office and mail things off. So be excited that you're uh, the founding fathers of family heritage uh, created that online form because uh, that definitely saves time and money. Um, so 
just know that, you know, whenever I sign somebody up, I tell them that I'm going to see them at least once a year to reservice them. And I, I, I stay true to my word, you know, for my clients that live four or five hours away, I will still call them and just check in with them, make sure that they're doing okay. Uh, see if there's any adjustments that we need to have. If they have new kids, um, if they've been divorced or, or married or whatever the situation is, guys, people change, you know, their, their situations, you know, quite often. So checking in as an agent, showing them that you care. And what happens is when you reservice these people and you go see them again, you're going to show them what they have. You're going to get them re-excited about what they currently have. You're going to show them how to use it, how to get paid some free money on wellness screenings, show them how to use it if they were to get a bad diagnosis, like an actual cancer or get into like a devastating accident. And then you're going to show them the other policies that they currently don't have. So I'm always tacking on policies to existing clients. So if they have like cancer and ICU and heart, I'm like, hey, you have the best cancer, heart, and ICU insurance in America. But man, could you imagine if something like an accident happened to you? Like how that impact you if you're going to work for six months to a year, right? So I'm going to show this to you. If you get it, great. If not, it's no big deal. But I'm going to show this to you just to round out your coverage. Okay. Um, that's a good one line. Whenever you're adding on policies to your current clients, I'm going to show you this cancer policy. It just kind of rounds out your coverage. It kind of completes the set that you already have. Right. So uh, that's some good language to use right there. Um, but then also, whenever you, you, you show people how to use claims, they give you referrals to other people. Once you do great at customer service and show them how to use it, they'll refer you to their friends, to their family, right, to their other coworkers. And, and they, you know, that business will want you to come back in because they know that you're going to take care of their people if one of their people were to get diagnosed with cancer or get into a bad accident, right? The, the business owner um, is going to be very, you know, welcoming and warm whenever you come back in. So, but if you're lazy with hand, handling claims, you never get back to your people, whatever it is, then they're never going to let you come back in. Right. So that's how I flip business from Aflac and Colonial all the time is because a lot of their agents don't really have that great customer service, which benefits us because we show them excellent customer service. You show them excellent customer service, you show them that you care, and that's going to separate you in the long term game. This is a long term game. Stick and stay and make it pay and uh, helping people will definitely add so much value to your business, guys. So much value. So I'm going to pause there. Um, are there any questions? on what we talked about so far? I don't have a question, but I just want to make a comment for all the agents to hear. Guys, our claim team is absolutely amazing. When you call them, be nice to them because they are not trying to find ways to not pay our clients. They work diligently. I mean, with my claim that I had that was very big and it's still I'm still working on it, Cheryl is awesome. All the ladies in our claims team is awesome. If you call them and you just ask, hey, you know, what else do I need to get? They will, they will like literally, and like my grandma got a paper yesterday of additional benefits that weren't paid out. Guys, our claim team, our claims office, if they look at a claim and they say, hey, X, Y, and Z is missing, they are going to mail a letter out to our clients and say, hey, we need X, Y, and Z because we owe you more money. There are no other companies that do that. So when you're talking to people about how awesome we are and how great that is, tell them our claims team is awesome. They find ways to pay clients. Not They're not in the business to figure out a way not to pay like homeowners and car insurance. They really are not. Um, so I just can't say enough about how great those ladies are that earn claims. Heck yeah, Brandy. Yeah, Brandy is currently going through one of the biggest accident claims in the history of family heritage. It's, uh, she's talked about it on here a couple of times, but uh, Guys, what we do does make a huge difference. And uh, I would highly recommend if you if there's a question out there in the field uh, and you don't know the answer to, call customer service, call claims and ask them that question live in the field in front of the prospect. Because I have had so many families protected when I was in the field, they asked the question, hey, uh, I've been diagnosed with this. Will this still cover me if this happens? I was like, uh, I don't know. So I called customer service because whenever I was here, if I called Van, he would always be like, you know, when you call customer service, what do they say? <laughs> I love that. So I always got in the habit of calling customer service right in front of the person. They could hear how good our customer service, you know, a live person actually answers the phone. Usually within one or two minutes, you're actually talking to somebody. And then you can get your question answered very quickly by a nice, nice human being. Um, and you, you thank them so much for their time. They're going to be nice right back to you as well. So guys, showing that service, uh, even in front of your clients is very important as well. So, um, 
Yeah, guys, just remember, we work for a company, you know, Globe Life, um, our stock is really high right now. It's one of the highest it's, it's ever been, um, ever. And uh, it's right outside the Fortune 500. Like I was just looking the other day, it's right outside the Fortune 500. So let's go finish this year strong and have a great start to 2023. And uh, we can get Globe Life possibly in the Fortune 500. That would be awesome. Um, I've seen it every year I've been here. We just keep climbing the ranks, climbing the ranks. And uh, before I retire someday, I would love to see Globe Life in the Fortune 500. But this is one thing, you know, taking care of your people is going to help you get there. Uh, one last thing, and then we'll wrap up today's call. Accountability. Uh, who is your AB? Who is your AB? Your accountability buddy uh, for 2023. Who's going to be the person that you talk to every single day, holding yourself accountable outside the business and inside the business? We all need guys, professional athletes have accountability buddies for everything that they do for waking up on time, for getting to the gym. They have personal trainers for, for film sessions. They have trainers for that, for making, you know, you know, working on their, their, their skills, whatever it is, actors, they have accountability partners for everything in this business. You need accountability buddies. I would recommend have an accountability buddy for somebody who's better than you. Somebody who's going to make you actually better. Cause if you have an accountability buddy for somebody who you're crushing, who, who you're just, you, you know, you're, you're way out producing them. And then that's not going to help you grow. If you want to grow in this business, have an accountability partner for somebody who produces more business than you. And all you have to do is outwork that person outwork that person who your accountability buddies with. So if they're producing twice as much business with as you are, you know, make sure that you start your day before they do and your finish your day after they finish. That way you 100% the controllable metrics are in your favor. Okay. Guaranteeing yourself success, just doing exactly what they do plus one more. Okay. Also having an accountability partner for something that's got nothing to do with selling insurance. It could be, you know, eating habits, guys, is very important in this business. You know, eating healthy, you know, making sure that we're improving our lifestyle, eating the right foods, getting away from sugar, the whole nine yards, you know, not going to fast food like, hey, this month, I'm not going to touch one fast food joint for the entire month of December and January. Okay, I'm not going to eat any sugar. I'm going to drink less. I'm going to drink more water, but drink less alcohol, whatever it may be for you. Uh, and then also working out. Hey, I'm going to have an accountability partner. So, by 7 a.m., I'm going to shoot them a picture of me wrapping up my workout and holding them accountable as well and giving them a pump up. Hey, I just got my workout done at, you know, 658. Um, have you gotten yours done yet as well? Just having accountability partners is fun and it, it makes you grow. It makes you grow as a person. So um, it's crazy the things that we'll do. You guys, your accountability partners can be somebody in this agency. It can be a Davenport agency. It can be in Transparent Financial. You know, we all get the same reports every week. You can look at the top 140. You can hunt those people down uh, on either Facebook, send them a message, get their phone number, or you can ask me, their, you know, for their phone number, I probably have it. Um, and I can get you in contact with them if you guys want to have an accountability partner for somebody who's not in our agencies. But guys, let's use the people that we have and let's hold each other accountable and uh, let's get competitive with each other and just help each other, you know, improve ourselves in the business and outside the business going into 2023. So that's how we're going to grow. 50 to 100% next year in 2023 is we have to get better and we're going to improve ourselves, including me. I'm going to get better next year. I know Van, he's going to improve himself next year as well. Uh, we're all, we got to be addicted to growth in 2023. So I appreciate you guys being on. Uh, today's Wednesday. Let's go have a monster day. Let's go show excellent customer service for our clients. Uh, do exactly what we say we're going to do. And uh, today is going to be your best day of your career so far. So excited to see you guys tomorrow. We will not have a Zoom call. We're just going to have the 8 a.m. call or sorry, 9 a.m. conference call, the legacy conference call at 9 a.m. tomorrow. So let's go out there, have a monster Wednesday, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah.